what's the thing you think is overlooked the most by creators who obviously they're just DIY, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm DIY. But uh, something that we're just missing that is kind of a fundamental to screenplays or screenwriting that could be easily fixed. Whether it's tech, whether it's camera stuff, whether it's writing. What do you think something that like you consistently think I have an edge because I know this? Hmm, well, that's a good question. I think a willingness to tread untraveled ground. When I do videos where I try and highlight small creators and I and I ask people to give me recommendations, it's usually like kids trying to promote their Fortnite gameplay channel or it's somebody trying to be the second rate version of a different creator and I think that's born out of a few things but ultimately I think the biggest reason is because that's proven ground and you see that somebody out there is having success covering a certain subject or a certain topic or a certain type of video and so people think I'm going to do that myself and as a result of that you have a bunch of people poorly imitating someone who's already doing it way better than anybody else and it takes a little bit of courage to try something that hasn't been done before or experiment or go outside the established wheelhouse um, but I think that uh, there are benefits to be had and if you're gonna if you're gonna create stuff why not why not try and create something that somebody else isn't already doing I think this point is like absolutely huge no millionaire has ever become a millionaire by reading someone else's how I became a millionaire book yeah because that's outdated information yeah you know and they took advantage of a market opportunity and it's survivor bias yeah you've got Total you've got these people bias. like I don't want to name any names because I don't want to start any beefs but you've got these creators who are like hey look just do this that and give it your all and it'll be right. great and it's like well there were a ton of factors right. that caused you to be the success that you are that were way out of your control and once there are two it's so much less interesting yeah I, when like Casey Neistat did his little vlog thing other people had done vlogs he kind of revolutionized it in a way yeah and then you saw everyone carrying around the same gorilla tripod mm -hmm. the same setup yeah. and they're doing the same like jump cuts and if it's if it's I mean it's not that you can't do the vlog a different way mm -hmm. you can but everyone is doing it the same way or a yeah. lot of people are and um, I think that's huge I think realizing that they didn't find success by that formula they found that success by finding a formula that was different mm -hmm. and that if you're copying it you're no longer different you're no longer mm -hmm. you no longer have the thing that they had that made them successful which was yeah. they were the first well, one of the reasons why he's been so successful is because what he does on the day-to-day -day is specifically conducive to that vlog format. And not everybody has an extravagant a life as he does. And why would you... I don't want to be critical when I say this, but why would you want to be second-rate Casey Neistat when you could be the first-rate version of yourself. Does that make sense? Maybe you think the second-rate version of Casey Neistat is better than not. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, I mean, if it's you like want it, yeah, if you want to be, if you think the second-rate version of Casey Neistat is way better than the first-rate version of yourself, <laughs> then uh, get, to, get to know yourself a little bit better. I mean, go, go live, like, so if I had started doing YouTube two years ago, or three years ago, let me rephrase that. If I had tried, if I had given myself from three years ago the job that I have right now with YouTube, mm -hmm. I would have washed out on week one. Because a lot of what I'm able to do right now, I had to learn through failure for those three years in order to be able to handle um, the responsibility that comes with creating the stuff that I create. Mm -hmm. And you. You shouldn't want to, let me see, let me restart this. You shouldn't want to, uh, 
I understand that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and everybody pays homage in some way, shape, or form. There are creators sure. that I lift things from every now and then because they've been an influence to me, but you've got to create something that it is that comes from you. And if you're putting on a facade or trying to be like somebody else, buying all the same equipment, buying all the same toys that they play with, having the same style of editing, using the same font that they use and the same type of cuts. And people, people don't want to watch a guy play, dr play dress up as Casey Neistat. Is yeah. like do that like yeah, what other successful YouTuber is doing like I don't know. I just I don't you wouldn't create like all these TV shows you see on on TV if people still watch you wouldn't TV create, like, you a, wouldn't create a knockoff you might <laughs> well look if somebody can create a knockoff Harry Potter but it's not going to be Harry Potter right, right. absolutely they're just going to go watch Harry Potter yeah and you would too <laughs> like. I don't know. Right. No, just I, thinking I, out loud. Completely. Agree. And again, you know, sometimes I feel like a hypocrite when I say things like that because there are times where when I create stuff, I'm influenced by things that I watch. And, you know, you've got to beg forgiveness to whoever you got to beg forgiveness to for that. But at the same time, you've got to be aiming towards your, you know, your unique perspective.